Tom, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate yeah. hearing from you. And maybe our guest here, who's uh, just now sitting in on the third microphone, uh, can shed some light on the subject of, uh, you know, perhaps using alternative currencies to get away from state currencies and, and all the, uh, you know, reporting requirements and forms and such that tend to come uh, come along with all that. Uh, Roger is with us here from bitinstant.com, and uh, you are one of a group of, uh, I, I believe, some investors. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Roger, uh, that uh, has gotten behind this uh, basically exchange where folks can go and put cash in a bank, a whole bunch of banks, and even other locations like 7-Eleven, Western Union, put cash in and then within an hour or so have Bitcoins? Uh, that's that's what you're up to, right? Right. Uh, actually, currently we have for uh, over 700,000 locations around the world. Uh, currently we have the United States, Russia, and Brazil where people can buy Bitcoins with cash. Within a few more weeks, we'll have all of the Eurozone online. Not long after that, we'll have the United Kingdom, Canada, Mexico, and more and more countries are coming online quickly where anybody will be able to walk into a location near them and buy Bitcoins for cash. Now, Bitcoin, go ahead and give, and give the audience who maybe are brand new listeners some idea of what a Bitcoin is. So anyone who's even remotely interested in liberty should be as excited as possible about Bitcoins. Bitcoins are the world's first decentralized payment system. That means you have full 100% control over your own money. It's mathematically impossible for anyone to freeze your account. It's mathematically impossible for anyone to block you mm -hmm. from sending your money from wherever you are to anyone anywhere else in the entire world. And if you're careful about how you use them, you can use them anonymously as well. And this is a total game changer for the entire world's monetary system. So there's no bank runs or anything like that with Bitcoin? Bitcoins are mathematically impossible to counterfeit or inflate. So if you have your Bitcoins, you have 100% control over them. Interesting. And I was asking you earlier, uh, you know, how much trading have you done in Bitcoin? And you said, I pretty much do everything in Bitcoin. Or since you've been here, you've traded tons of stuff in them. Right. That's impressive. Just about everything here at Bitcoin. Just about every merchant over in uh, Agora Valley is accepting Bitcoin. I would say 80% plus. That's incredible. I mean, I don't think that was the case last year here at all. Now, you weren't able to make it out last year, Roger, so this is your first pork fest. But I've noticed that vendors this year have, you know, a Bitcoin, some sort of signage on their table, that there's acceptance of Bitcoins. And I feel like that has really just skyrocketed since the last Porkfest. From what I heard reading on the Internet last year, there were just a few vendors that were accepting Bitcoin. This year, in my experience, I would say over 80 percent of the vendors are accepting Bitcoin. It's impressive. So when you were saying that all these new places are going to, are going to be having uh all the capabilities so that people there can use Bitcoin. Is it Does it work where the more people using it, the more valuable, valuable it becomes? Right, because there's a limited supply of Bitcoin for the entire world to use. As Bitcoin becomes more and more popular, the value of Bitcoins in terms of dollars is likely to increase. So it is scarce. Bitcoin is scarce. Bitcoin works very similar to digital gold. There's a limited amount. But it's much more convenient than physical gold because with bitcoins, they're essentially infinitely divisible, mm -hmm. and you can send them anywhere in the world instantly over the Internet with no fees or essentially no fees. Well, because it's uh, instantly divisible or because it's it's right there to, to where you can go down as far with as many zeros pretty much as you want to with a Bitcoin, uh, effectively that does mean that it can just continue to rise in value and ultimately people will just trade in fewer and fewer amounts of Bitcoin. Right. right. About two years ago – Bitcoins were le worth less than a penny each. Today, they're trading at about $6.60 each. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, more likely than not, five years from now, they'll be worth of a heck of a lot more than they are right now as they become more and more popular and more and more people are using them around the world. So I hear a, a critique or a lot of times in conversations when people are, what is this Bitcoin thing about? And then someone explains it. Some people will say, well, it's not like precious metals because you can't use the bitcoin to you know you can't make electronics out of it and everything but it does have value in that like intrinsic if you want to use that word some people don't like that but intrinsic value in that it's anonymous so even people always act like it's only for buying drugs on the silk road but people use it for anything you want to do anonymously like some you don't necessarily want people to know that you bought a used car or or you know stuff like that it's, it's a good way to keep your finances uh, private, right? It's not automatically anonymous, but if you use it properly, it can be anonymous. So okay. that's an important point for people to know. So don't just assume because you're using bitcoins, everything you do is anonymous. That is definitely not the case. But if you're careful with how you use it, it can be used anonymously. Okay.
855-450-FREE. Maybe you've had a question about uh, Bitcoins. This guy, Roger, is uh, one, of the, one of the people that is really, I mean, seri- you're seriously into this stuff. Uh, you are a sponsor of uh, this program, and essentially you're sponsoring for Bitcoin. So you're not a member of some kind of Bitcoin, a Bitcoin you know, board of directors. You don't have a stake necessarily in uh, you know, the success of Bitcoin itself because there is no Bitcoin entity. There's no Bitcoin corporation. You want to see Bitcoin succeed, uh, succeed because, as I understand it, you believe this is a revolutionary tool or an evolutionary tool perhaps for activism and the world monetary scene. Can you tell us more about your vision for uh, for what Bitcoin is here in a moment? Absolutely. All right, let's uh, bring Roger back from BitInstant.com. That's BitInstant.com is where you can go to get your Bitcoins in less than an hour by depositing cash at any major bank. Once again, BitInstant.com. There's more coming up here at 855-453, live from Fort Fest 2012 at Rogers Campground. Beautiful Lancaster, New Hampshire, right across from the White Mountains. It's an incredible time with great people and all kinds of new faces, people that I've never had a chance to meet before. And I'm grateful to uh, have been able to, like Roger from BitInstant.com. He is uh, one of the sponsors behind this program. And BitInstant.com is a way folks can get their hands on Bitcoins uh, within a relatively short period of time by depositing cash at any major uh, you know, get bank and some other locations. What was it, 700000 around the world, uh, Roger Ver? Over 700000 around the world currently and more coming every couple of weeks as we add new countries. You know, you guys were talking during the break about some exciting developments that are coming soon with Bitcoin. But I wanted to hear more from you about, you know, what is this? What does Bitcoin really mean to not just the the freedom movement, but to the monetary world as a as a whole? Yeah, with Bitcoin, individuals don't need a bank. You don't need anybody but your own self. You have a 100% control over your own money. You can send or receive money with anyone anywhere in the world. Instantly, just like that. Uh, a neat thing that happened recently, I was, uh, I was in mainland China meeting with an Android tablet manufacturer to talk about uh, finalizing the hardware specs for a Bitcoin point-of-sale ser- point terminal. Mm-hmm. And the owner of this factory in China said, well, what are you going to be using our, our uh, tablets for? And we said, we're going to be using them for Bitcoin-related things. And he said, Bitcoin, what is that? And what we thought initially was going to be a half-hour-long meeting talking about hardware specifications turned into a five-and-a-half-hour-long meeting explaining Bitcoins. Mm. And the CEO of this company, he got it, and he oh, understood yeah. just how much Bitcoin is going to change the whole world. And one of his comments was, said, Bitcoin, this, this is like Pandora's box. Uh-huh. And he's right. It a very is good like, kind of Pandora's it's box. It's a wonderful Pandora's box, and it's about to change the entire world. And this factory owner in China now wants to pre-install the Bitcoin software onto every single Android tablet he manufactures, which is around 150,000 tablets a month, Not bad. about 2 million tablets a year. And he's going to market these tablets as having the Bitcoin software that will allow anyone to send and receive money with anyone else in the entire world. And people, especially inside of mainland China, will absolutely love that because uh, it, currently it's hard to do that from inside China. Absolutely. I mean, the more oppressive a government is uh, toward its people, the more valuable Bitcoin can become to set them free from whatever their uh, financial situation is. So, And I know that Bitcoin is set up so that governments can't come in and tinker with it, but has uh, has the United States government or any other governments, uh, have they reacted to this? Are they worried about it? Do they, you know, I, I don't really see a lot of press releases of uh, them trying to make them illegal, but maybe I just haven't seen it. A few weeks ago, the a report from the FBI was leaked to the media. And uh, the general impression that uh, I got from reading the FBI report was that the FBI is mildly worried about some of the things that people can do with Bitcoin, but they didn't seem to have any intent whatsoever of actually shutting down Bitcoin itself. Nor could they. I mean, what would they do even if they had that intent? And I think that's part of the reason why they didn't seem to have that intent, because mm-hmm. the only way the government could ever stop Bitcoin would be to shut down the entire Internet in the entire world. And uh, I don't see that as a realistic possibility at this time. I don't time. either. I suppose that is a slight risk someone takes when buying Bitcoin, but the Internet seems to be like it's going to be with us for the long haul. And uh, and as you said, as long as the Internet's around, Bitcoin is there. As long as people are connected to the Bitcoin network, it, you know, there's there, it's out there. And there's no way for them to, even if they take out BitInstant.com, and that was one of my next questions, even if they take out your website, that doesn't do anything to Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin is completely distributed and it's untouchable. But what about BitInstant.com? I mean, that is probably being hosted somewhere. I don't know what country or in which country you've chosen to host that site. Is it possible for government to come after BitInstant and take you guys out? It's it's possible, but we're very, very careful about following all the rules. We've registered with FinCEN. We're following all the government requirements to make sure we do everything exactly right so we don't have any trouble. And uh, that's our goal, and we're integrating with the current existing financial system and we kind of play the middleman that where we bridge the bitcoin world with the existing financial world and uh that's a good place for us to be in we're launching all sorts of exciting services soon you'll be able to pay every single bill you can imagine inside the united states with bitcoin you'll be able to pay your mortgage your car insurance your water bill your electricity bill absolutely anything and everything will be able to pay be paid with bitcoins thanks to bitinstant.com coming in the very very near future that's just amazing to me being able to you know pay my bills with something besides frns that's exciting because it's one of the biggest objections i think that somebody who's thoughtful about alternative currencies is going to have you know i like uh, silver and i like bitcoin but you know, the landlord doesn't like it, uh, or the local uh, vendor that I'm buying parts from for, you know, my business doesn't like it, or they don't get it yet, and so it's not valuable to them, so they won't take it. And certainly the power company, you know, this government-approved monopoly, they're not going to take Bitcoin. But you're, you've come up with a way, some sort of uh, automated system, digital system, to get rid of that objection and to just simply handle these transactions in some, I don't know how, you know, the, the programming genius behind it, but as, as long as it works for people, that's going to be a real, I think, attraction for Bitcoin. Yeah, there's just so many exciting projects that people are working on with Bitcoin. Uh, well, they I, don't have to ask anyone's permission. It's completely open source. So all these projects, some come, some go, uh, but the ones that are out there that are you know, the most useful, the market will decide, and it's really an open market in software for the Bitcoin because there's no central like licensing authority. You know, It's not like Disney is saying, oh, well, we're going to charge you all this money to use our brand name. No, there's no brand name for Bitcoin. You just go out and start developing for it. Right, and uh, if, it's really interesting. If you look back a year ago, there weren't very many places where you can use Bitcoins or many app mm -hmm. stores that would accept Bitcoins. If you look today, there are thousands and thousands and more coming on every day, and it's really exciting to see the growth of Bitcoin in all countries around the world. And I see a lot of my a lot of my friends in Keene who have their own little projects going on on their web pages. They have uh, We Accept Bitcoin don Donations tab on there, so I know it's pretty must be pretty easy to go ahead and put that on your website if it's a good way to accept donations because that's you know having uh bitcoins in your purse and you want to throw uh one of your favorite radio shows if it's ladies and keen or something some bitcoins that's pretty cool absolutely one other uh, really amazing bitcoin technology that uh, i would like to mention to those out there that haven't heard of it before is a website called feed the birds and uh that's f-e-e-d-z-e B-I-R-D-S dot com. And if you have a Twitter account, you can send Bitcoins to this account and pay other people to retweet your message. And for the equivalent of about five U.S. dollars worth of Bitcoins, you can have your message retweeted to around 300,000 people. Mm. And I don't know of any other advertising platform that will get your message to 300,000 people's Twitter inbox for, five for about bucks? five dollars. And uh, the way it works is that $5 worth of Bitcoin is distributed to all the people that retweet your message. Mm. So not only is it a good way to spread your message, it's also a good way to get Bitcoin in the hands of more uh, new Bitcoin users. It's exciting stuff. And how new is the Bitcoin? When did it originally launch? Uh, it's around three years ago now. Originally, Bitcoin weren't worth anything. They were absolutely free, and people just kind of played with them. And then the first real-world transaction for something physical for Bitcoins is somebody bought uh, two two pizzas for 10,000 bitcoins. And at the time, 10,000 bitcoins were worth two pizzas. But today, those 10,000 bitcoins would be worth about $65,000. Incredible. And that's just in the course of two years. And I think uh, two years from now, those 10,000 bitcoins will be worth a heck of a lot more than $65,000. Wow. So it's kind of tempting to hoard them. It's tempting to hoard them, but they're so incredibly useful to use as a currency online that uh, I do my best to pay for everything I can with them online, including my other uh, day job is selling electronic components that are manufactured in China. I'm paying a number of factories in China mm. with bitcoins every single week now, and it's really exciting to see these merchants in China accepting bitcoins as payment.
Well, why wouldn't they? I mean, it, it, you get the payment instantly. It's not like you have to go through any gatekeepers or checking accounts, credit card processors, or any of that stuff. It's just literally put in the address to which you want to send the Bitcoins, and then you hit send or go or whatever, and within minutes, it's done. Another interesting thing I think we'll see happening in China in the near future is uh, currently in China, it's very difficult to send your money outside of China. So mm-hmm. there's lots and lots of rich Chinese factory owners in China that would love to go and be able to gamble with their money in Macau, for example. Mm. And Macau, for those of you who don't know, that's Las Vegas of the Orient and has over 10 times the gambling revenue compared to Las Vegas. Wow. And uh, these people aren't allowed to wire transfer money to them. You're not allowed to physically carry more than $6,000 of cash. Mm -hmm. But I think pretty soon they'll be able to buy bitcoins in China. Take the flight over to Macau and then and cash, cash out their in. bitcoins at the Macau casinos, gamble to their heart's content. All using bitinstant.com, presumably? No, no, no. We won't be involved in that directly. But oh, okay. <laughs> I wonder about online poker, too. It sounds like there could be opportunities for the online poker market, which has been shut down by the United States government. It's starting up again thanks to Bitcoin. Oh, love it. Uh, Roger, thanks for spending your time here with us. Bitinstant.com. Go there and uh, get your bitcoins. And also, don't forget, we use coins.org to learn more about the Bitcoin. That's weusecoins.org. There's more coming up here live from Porkfest 2012. Hour 2 is next.